Oh, Alan, we've got to go. You know what I feel like? Singing? I, uh, you're going you're gonna to start singing? Breaking the song? Yeah. Uh, you know, actually, I tried to even hum the A-Team song uh, today, and I couldn't get How it. How did it sound? That's not bad. Okay. That's pretty close. Yeah, so I got uh, I got a, a younger person in my office. Did no clue. Really? Uh, yeah, and I felt like, you know what? That's why I shouldn't hum. Yeah, damn it. But no, we, we've got, we got to talk. I get to hum. I get to whistle. No, can't do that either. <laughs> you have many other gifts. So just focus on those. You know what I feel like doing, though? What do you feel like? I feel like we just need to be at the gathering of the kinks. Like how I did this. Uh, he's good. starting to do this, by the way. I mean, he's he's weaving things in, keeping the audience on their toes. I know. I'm excited about this. You are excited. I am. And so, you know, so coming back, we're getting back together this week. Um, I've had a big daddy weekend uh, and week. I was up in D.C. For By the, the way, Chaz, this is every weekend, so yada, yada, yada. All right. So this, What did Big Daddy do this weekend? Yeah, so this week, well, the week before I was up in D.C. in Tyson's. You ever heard of that oh, place? Yeah, Tyson's Corner. Whoa, there's some money there, brother. Yeah, there is. Yeah, and so I got to go there for the Neary yeah, Conference. Your tax money. Oh, yeah, I know. it. And it, I tell you, remodeling is hot up there. So I was up there for the National Association of the Remodeling Industry. And uh, mm-hmm. I just got named the national marketing chair. Really? And, right. Huh? Look at me. Woo-hoo. And then I came back to Athens and we worked on a home show. And then I was supporting my manager out there. And uh, I think I saw tens of people. Really? <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great home show. So, <laughs> so yeah. All, so, all 10 or 20? <laughs> uh, exic- for all weekend, three days. Hey, as fact, long I, as they were your avatar. The highlight of this home show was uh, one of the roofing guys got a drone out in a in a you know again the facility right he gets it stuck in the rafters starts ripping up the insulation and the cops <laughs> the, the uh rent cops were running around and I'm, I'm behind him going use your gun use your gun <laughs> get him get him he's so only got a taser or a he flashlight only, he, he only got tased by paul mart paul, paul cop all right we got to get to this uh if you are dialing into this episode you're gonna love this one this guy's name is chaz wolf gathering of the kings you're gonna get to know more about him and what he's done um, I actually listen to his podcast. Uh, he doesn't know that because I just told him. And uh, I always pick up some nuggets when I listen to his stuff. He's had some amazing guests on as well. So I kind of get the feeling that everything Chaz does is amazing. I know, Chaz. Is there anything you've ever screwed up? I mean, look at his beard. I mean, even his beard's amazing. Hair, look at, I mean, perfect. just look at the beard. Yeah, I know. His voice. There's been a few things. We could talk about them if you want. <laughs> you, you mean you made mistakes? Oh, yeah. Just, just a few. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So Chaz, uh, thanks for coming on. Excited to talk about everything, but I think where I wanted to start is, did you always want to be an entrepreneur? Was that always what you were doing? And you said, "Man, I'm doing this. I'm going for it." Well, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, y- yes and no. Like I don't know if I t- articulated it like that, but it are it, it came it came out as <clears throat> how do I make money, or what can I do today to make money? And so when I was younger, that was selling candy bars and popcorn and all the fun stuff door to door. Um, when I got older, that was lawn skate or lawn maintenance and landscaping and doing whatever I could. And, and then eventually when I was 24, that looked like me purchasing my first, like, you know, legit business uh, franchise. And uh, I haven't looked back ever since. So the answer is yes. I, I got that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for us, for us, I was taking notes actually, because uh, so you're 24. Did you go to college? Uh, I, I started, I went to Ozark Christian college in Joplin, Missouri. Okay. Uh, I had some, some thought that I was going to be a youth minister and, uh, I had some people kind of scratch their head, you know, at, at me on that going, really? Okay. Like, I mean, I got a heart for people. I love to lead. I've always been helpful, uh, mentoring others and stuff like that. Um, but you know, sales and marketing and business and that, that's, that's really the talents that God's given me. That's amazing that you went to uh, Ozark, did the youth minister. We've had a number of people on there, and I'm looking at somebody who's the son of a minister, mm. oh, a minister's son, as it were. That's right. So, yeah. and, I, and I came out okay. You did. <laughs> and, and, a bit and, of a journey. And one of us was, went through a lot of therapy, and one of us didn't. Guess which one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not the one who was the minister's son. All right. So here I'm back. Yeah. Uh, well, so your ministry is in your business now. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I think that you can, I mean, as a faith filled business guy, like I'm going to operate in a certain way. I love how you guys actually, you were, you're being funny, but I took it as a compliment, you know, that, uh, that I do things with excellence and it doesn't mean that I'm perfect at all. Um, but to me being excellent is a representation of my beliefs, not only spiritually, but my belief in me, my belief in my family. Basically if my name's on it, like I want it to represent something excellent. 
Chaz, it, it, it wasn't an attempt to be funny. We were just jealous. Oh, it's <laughs> jealous. Yeah. In fact, just, it's just the beard that's got you jealous. That's oh, right. The hair, <laughs> the beard, the think, voice, I think the look. As long as we're going biblical, I'm pretty sure that's in there. And we're uh, we're just 1,000% personifying jealousy. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That is that's right. All. So there you go. You don't have to read yeah, the book. Just you're going to have to go do a couple Hail Marys. Yeah, that's right. As a Catholic <laughs> guy, um, all I have to do is uh, anything I do, I just go on Saturday, get it all taken care of. I'm back to square one. I get to start doing it all over again. Yeah, that we call that reconciliation. Awesome. Thank you. There you go. So your first business was what? Edible Arrangements franchise, um, 24, 20, 25 years old. Uh, and it was an existing business. And so okay. I had been looking for a business at that point for probably almost two years, maybe 18 months or so. And so I know you guys talk a lot about that. Some of your audience is filled from being in that corporate space and kind of making that jump. That was me. 24, I was already in six-figure club uh, as a sales leader in a corporate uh, space, and I jumped, let it all go, and said, we'll figure it out as we as we fall. So you've why the edible arrangements, and, and maybe for, for our listeners, let's, let's find out what that is first, and then why did you yeah. pick that business model? Yeah, edible arrangements is a franchise system that uh, we take. It's, it's all treats now, but back then it was fruit, and we would cut fruit and put them in baskets and make them look like flower bouquets. And so we still do that. That's the core business. Mm-hmm. And that business really is associated to, uh, you know, uh, occasions, right? Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, happy val- or uh, birthdays, get well soons, congratulations, all this stuff, right? Um, and so since then, we they've expanded, the brand has expanded into different treats, cakes, brownies, cookies, all kinds of fun stuff. And so the brand for me wasn't necessarily the kicker. Um, I love business, the motion of, you know, creating a relationship, finding a, a a connection of product that solves a problem, selling that product, delivering it with excellence, um, counting the money, you know, like every aspect of business is the game or the widget for me. And so uh, I looked at all kinds of things. You know, I looked at different franchises. I looked at non-franchises. I looked at service companies. I looked at furniture companies. I looked at food. I, I mean, you name it. So it had nothing really to do with the brand. Although I felt like with my sales and marketing bra- background, I could, I could sell the thing. Um, and I felt like I could, you know, at 24, I wasn't super versed in a lot of experience in life, um, especially in the trades. And so I, uh, I felt like I could learn how to cut fruit. <laughs> I was Good. confident I could do that part. You know what? There's one thing I do. I can cut some fruit. Yeah. As a young guy, and I don't know if you had a million dollars in the bank by 24, but you had to sell yourself to the franchisor too. They had to approve the sale, correct? They did. And, and that was, um, that was, that was a process. And actually the difficult part of that whole transaction wasn't the franchisor. It was the landlord who was assigning the lease. Right. And so he was super concerned with me being 24, which is funny because the business had already been there for years and it's the business making the rent payment. But, um, the guy actually selling that business had to kind of talk to him and be like, have you met Chaz? Like I know I've seen that beard. Did look just at his beard. (laughs) Maybe I definitely didn't have a beard then. Oh, um, but a you're bit. in commercial real estate. You're not going to lend somebody uh, or give them a lease because of a beard. Oh, I shouldn't do that anymore. Oh my god, yeah. it, the beard is not always indicative of rent payments. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know what? Gold can nugget. I, can I borrow your pen? Gold nugget. Write that down. Gold nugget. Right. So you had to have your. You had to have the guy try to sell the business. Talk your the landlord into it. Yeah, wow. yeah. And I think that you know, again, this is for maybe the young guys out there or gals, um, or really just anybody trying to be excellent, like. You, there's going to be things on paper or in situations that might be limiting. But uh, to the point of the guy that was selling me the business, he talked to the landlord and said, hey, look, have you met Chaz? Because I'm going to suggest that you probably haven't yet based on this interaction. Because if you had met me and interacted with me, 24 would not have been going through your mind, right? And so I still think that there's a way, especially as young, um, hungry entrepreneurs or those that want to you know, be entrepreneurs, you can hold yourself in a way of excellence. And look, Here's true, true authentic, uh, authenticity here. Seven months before that, I'm working with the business broker. I'm about to buy a two location dry cleaners. And I, I asked him, his name was Tom. I said, Hey Tom, can you help me understand this P and L thing? Wow. Oh boy. That's a quick learning yeah. curve. He's yeah. a, that, he's, I'm, I'm, he's I'm older. That did not come up with the landlord. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> so so the rent, no, it I did to pay rent every yeah. month, every month, not every just month. a couple times. Right. So, but yeah. so yeah, this, so I say that t- in, a tongue in cheek because I put together at 24. Sure. I knew how to carry myself, but it's not like I knew everything and I didn't, I didn't pretend to know everything either. Um, Literally seven months before, I'm like, hey, can you help me understand the PL? He's like, he said, oh boy, okay, let's sit down. You know, I'm, he's he's helping facilitate the transaction. 
<laughs> going, geez, we get, we, I don't want to set this guy off on the wrong foot, but, um, I'm just a firm believer that action, um, first off, I guess it starts more in your thoughts, but, but action is the driver. All I right. can learn something along the way because of my beliefs, but the action piece is where most people just, they're just stuck either thinking or, or, or preparing. And I just took action. So I'll figure He's it out along the way. He's Patton. He's just driving straight through Europe and blowing everything up. One hundred percent. Yeah, and everybody else can figure out the details. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, <laughs> he he brought up one thing I talk about with my team. It's called thoughts equal actions, actions equal habits, habits equal character. Yeah. So, um, your thoughts uh, are I would drive it. So the good news is, um, only ten percent of them are positive. The other ninety percent are all negative. So you got that going for. Is that are you saying mine or yours? Uh, well, actually, mine most of the time ninety nine point eight percent negative yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> well and, and then to kick that in in the in the hiney there it's 95 percent are, are subconscious you you don't even know that they're happening yeah so yeah and then really want to get a grip on things and then i, I read another uh part of that that said that and then here's the here's the here's the next one is that 80 percent of them are repeating i'm like uh -huh. oh that's awesome yeah i said this guy's in a deep dark i mean i know i'm excited about running my handyman business after 16 yeah. years yay all right so you're 24 did you take a loan out did you have money did, uh yeah. or did, were, did you were good to go yeah, no, did an SBA loan. <clears throat> I put 70K down of my own money. And um, I actually had to borrow a little bit of that from some family, um, from my from my mother and father-in-law. And uh, but I had been saving. I had I had I knew I was buying a business and um and I left the whole the whole deal. Uh, <clears throat> kind of fast forward that story a smidge just to kind of make that uh point a little bit more exaggerated. Six months later, I purchased a second one that was also an SBA loan, another 70k down. Um, both of those businesses were about a four hundred five hundred thousand dollar purchase. Um, a year later, I, I bought a brand or I, I started a brand new one. And a year later, I opened up a brand new one in a city three hours away from me. And a year later, I opened up a second one in that city three hours, a third, a fourth one in Kansas City, and I bought one in Florida all in the same month. So I went from zero to seven locations in four years, sixty five or so employees, three states. It was nuts. So the Florida one is an outlier geographically. The other ones are, you can get to pretty easily. I can get to the three hours away if I needed to. Obviously yeah. it's not a, you know, hop, skip and a jump, but, but yeah. Um, That's a completely different management style. A hundred percent. And I'm super thankful for that because it's so funny again, going, you know, just driving fast and, you know, figuring out the rest later. You know, I remember I, I was exactly where I was when I got that email. I'd been a franchisee for a while and, and fairly well known. I was, again, pretty young, making a lot of moves. And so I was on some email strand. Don't even know how I got on this email strand, but the lady sent an email saying, hey, we're selling. And I saw it pop through on my screen and I literally opened it up and said, I'd like to meet with you. What's your phone number? And I'll call you. And I think I had her on the phone within like 15 minutes. Wow. And most people are like, Florida, <laughs> why? And I was like, it's Florida. Why not? It's, it's Florida. <laughs> Gives me an excuse to go somewhere. Hello. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So, so you, you scaled. Uh, that's very quick, especially in the retail world uh, yeah. in four years. And it's hard because what does everybody tell you about retail? You've got to be there. Kind of like a restaurant business, right? You've got to yep. be there or yep. you don't make money. So yep. how were you able to overcome that with people in the beginning? That's a great question. Um, so my experience before that, obviously leading teams in the sales place. Um, so that I leaned on that heavily. So uh, personality assessments and uh, just being a good leader myself. Uh, I was, I'm still growing, obviously, but I had read hundreds of books by this time. Like, I, I take personal development extremely seriously, and so me at 24, even before I even started this journey, I had already still read hundreds of books. Um, <clears throat> terrible in school. Well, I was terrible in school because I didn't apply myself, but it would have been amazing in school. Um, but didn't of read anything. You yeah. So, um, yeah, he got so, yeah. two B's. I got two B's. Yeah. Yeah. If Chaz yeah. wants to be I awesome, did horrible. I got two B's. Awesome. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we should I move on. To um, be, <laughs> I choose to be excellent today. I choose but no, to it's be. because you liked it. Because you liked the topic. And I think that, exactly. that's, that there's a there's a big thing for educational systems. Is that, yep. is that why are we not making it more interesting? I just had this conversation 100%. in my office. Is uh, um, We talk about piano and picking piano teachers. And one of the girls uh she's raising her her children are you know younger i'm obviously older she goes yeah I, i'm not going to force them to play a music i mean why i said i'll tell you why i said i had two years of piano i can sit down on the piano and i can rip off a lot you know about five or six minutes of just really quick things and people think oh my god he's a virtuoso no, no i could barely do anything after those six minutes but i can do it yeah. 
I said, yeah. plus it was the discipline. I said, so I, I, uh, I disagree. I said, I think you should. I think you should make them and make it. I said, just wish they would have made it more fun for me instead of having me play the, the most boring concert cheer to, oh, God, they were so boring. Dude, my, my experience with piano. So first off, I pushed off my fine art credit in high school until the very end. So my senior year, I'm taking beginning piano. <laughs> and so here's what happens. I go in and uh, he teaches, you know, music and how to read it. And I never learned how to read music. I can't, I don't even still today. I'm just like, I'm confused. Um, but what I could do is I could watch him play and then I could play it. And so I would ask him to play two or three times. And then I would sit down for like 30 minutes after class. And I would literally just do it until I got it. Just memorization. And I would come back two weeks later. Uh, or I would come back to the next class, which was a couple of days later, and I'd play it and he'd be good to go. So I asked him, I convinced him the second semester to, that I could do it as an independent study because it was the only class that I had. I had set up my situation where I could work full time, make money, and it was my only class. And I was coming every other day. And I was like, look, here's the deal. You know, if you could work with me, I'll come in every two weeks, play the song that you want me to, I'll practice at home. And so he did. He, he agreed, but here's what I would do it in that class, the same thing. I would, He'd show me the next song. I'd say, play it two or three times for me. And then I would just literally sit there for 30 minutes. I would hammer it out. I'd go home and practice maybe two or three times, come back two weeks later, play the song. He'd be like, good to go. Here's the next one. <laughs> oh my God. That's I still awesome. I don't know how to read music. <laughs> that's my, that's how my son uh, learned to play guitar. I mean, it's completely yeah. self-taught and he would just watch YouTube videos to learn a riff from a yep. song that he liked. And for, I mean, he's amazing on the guitar, but for the first five years, he couldn't play a song all the way through. Yeah. Right. He'll, right. play yeah, he'll play the riffs. He'll play the riffs. The fun yeah. stuff. Yeah. But isn't that, I, again, isn't that how you learn? Going back you're, to your you're point. Fun stuff. Something. You, yeah. you're, you want to apply yourself and learn more. He, he, Chaz wanted to get into personal development and leadership, and, and he wrote a hundred read 100 books. Yeah. I mean, that's just what yeah. it takes. Uh, if you've, you've got to be interested. That's why I asked about the business model. So for you, your passion was the business. It yeah, I wanted to grow, the, Cutting the fruit or doing what you, yeah. you wanted to see if you could grow. And that was your passion. And that's, you got to follow that because if you want to be great at something, you got to follow your passion, man. Yeah. yeah. So you're a disc profile guy. Did I hear? I, I'm familiar with the disc. We use culture index, which uh, I think is just a little bit more maybe in depth, but, but yeah, I'm f totally familiar with the, with the, with the disc. I'm a, I'm a big DC on the disc. Okay. Yeah. I can imagine. So talk about how you use that when you're hiring. Yeah, good question. So um, first off, if you can identify in a position what character traits are needed. So again, using the disk even or culture index, is this a driver? Is this like a revenue driving type of position? Do they need to talk with people? Do they need to be detailed? Do they need to be more methodical? Um, like what what are the things needed in this in this um, role? And then I can I can hire based specifically on that. Now in culture index, I can I can create what's called a C job and I can basically manipulate like this is exactly this would be perfect right and so when someone takes a survey it tells me there's an 89 percent likeness or a you know 22 percent likeness and so i'm just not going to waste my time with people that don't meet a certain threshold of what i've already predetermined this this role needs in order to be successful um so again i'm not going to put a um highly detailed perfectionist in a sales role because that's going to hold them back uh, as opposed to the person that's like not detailed at all, is probably going to do as long as they like talking to people, probably going to do really well in sales, <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, obviously. So, 60, 65 people, but uh, every place has a manager, right? Yep, exactly. Everybody had a manager, and then at one point, uh, with all the seven, I had a general manager over all seven um, locations. And so, to kind of to your point from before, yeah, how did I scale up so quickly? It was building not only the individual teams, but and then doing um, you know structure building with those managers developing them as persons. And then, uh, of course, uh, the general manager spent a lot of time with her as she then would then pour into each location. Right. Now, do you still own these? I own two now. I've exited most of them. Um, the two that I have are the ones that are not in my city. <laughs> Go figure. Oh, wow. Right? Um, <laughs> going back so to that point, though, it's like, you know, look, I figured out real quick how to solve problems without me. Now, I was maybe still involved in the problem solving, but it was me on a phone call or in a text thread, as opposed to physically driving to go solve the problem. And I think that that's probably one of the number one things that holds an entrepreneur back is they have this uber confidence in themselves, which is great. That's what got them where they are, but they haven't handed the reins off to somebody else. And I forced myself. I literally become, had to because I wasn't there. Yeah. You become the choke point of your own business. Literally. You're the wow. problem. Yeah. Right. 
Huh. We're always the problem, but yeah. <laughs> How did you decide on keeping the two that you kept? Um, well, I sold I sold the local ones in in a package, so that was pretty easy. Um, the other two are just kind of hanging out. We've got great people, and and it's fairly passive now, so it's just part of the portfolio. Is it in Florida? Because you get to go to Florida in the winter. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just funny. Uh, <laughs> I, believe it or not, uh, that yes, but uh, but I haven't been there in like two and a half years, actually. Um, so they've they've actually been recently been like are you like come on like come hang you know okay yeah <laughs> just been busy sorry i had to answer that that was stupid back to solving problems without me yeah <laughs> you need to, you need to be more like Chaz. i know i need to be more like Chaz. i just gotta i had to make sure i get this uh, coordinated you, because you're not gonna bailed be on me. any chemicals that get it to grow i'm sorry all right <laughs> I, 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 I that spray on stuff you were talking about. This, we could episode. spray it. Yeah, up. we could spray. Yeah, it. we've done spray on before. That's great. So, what uh, right now your primary business is gathering the kings, the mastermind community. Let's talk about how, how did you start that, or did you do another business as well? Uh, with yeah, good question. So, yeah, just to kind of give you the, the, the lay of the land here. We did the seven locations in edi with Edible. Um, I started a couple of real estate companies, so we still have some short term holdings and some long term holdings. Um, and some other investments in that kind of playing field. I love real estate, love the creativity of real estate. Um, we also it, have a construction it, company here. Is in it re City. residential real estate or commercial? Or yeah. what do you, okay. Residential, but multifamily. So sometimes people call multifamily uh, commercial, but yes. Yeah. Residential single families as well as multifamily. And then we do uh, an angle of short term rentals in the mix of both of those. It, and what markets are you in there? Uh, we are in Kansas City and we are in South Florida. Kansas like Southwest. South South Florida. Um, gotcha. Yeah. No, I have I have a handyman remodeling company here in Atlanta. That's why I was just yeah. interested uh, just to see how it's going. So you have you have the the real estate arm. You do that. Yep. And, and who did you develop that with? Yeah, that's me. That's me. Um, so those are all just properties that we own, my wife and I, and just kind of develop systems around what we like to do. And then we've got some investments with other partners. Um, you know that uh, that we're not in like daily operations, but again, that again I feel like is you're going to be looking for opportunities to invest at some point when you're successful financially. So it's just more of a wise decision making around investing more than anything. It's not like I can, you know, say I've been successful in that necessarily. It's not really my is, business, you know, is that the uh, real estate, is that a passive or is a uh, passive income or are you actually ac actively managing in that one as well? Yeah. The, so the, the, the properties that we own that we are managing, I have a team that manages. So, um, I'm involved on a weekly basis with a one hour call from like a leadership perspective, but yeah, fairly passive. Yeah, nice. Seems to be a pattern. I know. I'm, I'm liking what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to say this uh, in my mastermind group quite a bit. I haven't said it in a while just because, you know, I, I think sometimes it's, it's really hard to understand, but I used to say, if you only had one hour a week or a month for that matter to run your business, how could you do it? Not, can you do it, but how could you do it? And if you literally just limit yourself to one hour a week, and, and what, I mean, immediately your mind goes to, oh, well, I, first off, is that even possible? Let's, let's move that thought out of the way. Cause it's possible. I just told you my edible stores, it's one hour a week. Huh. Um, <clears throat> what that looks like though, is you <laughs> looking at all the moving be, pieces. He's going to create a monster. Well, I mean, I'm, you're already our monster, Chris. I am a monster. Yeah. I'm going to go in there. I'm like, you get one hour of me this week. <laughs> go. <laughs> what? Well, is that all you have to say? <laughs> say more. Yeah, exactly. Get out. It, you you start identifying the things that are taking your time and who you would need to give that to. So, you know, we're I own a construction company here in Kansas City that's fairly new, um, but but we'll do multiple seven figures this year, um, in our second calendar year, and I ninety minutes a week is my involvement with that company. I've what never kind been of on any job sites. There? Say it again. What kind of construction is that? Commercial or residential? High end rem remodeling on residential side. So bathrooms, basements, additions. Oh really? ADUs. Nice. So is that a partner you worked with or did you start that? Yeah, you know, I started, I'm the founder. I do have two other partners and we have an integrator. So we use the EOS model um, yep. and, and most of my companies, um, but mm. that, that company specifically, the integrator is not an owner. Um, and the other two owners report to the integrator and I'm the visionary. I gotcha. So your, your 90 minute, one hour meetings, those are the L10s. Yep. Yep. Nice. So he actually, he holds to the traction model. Which there is a big go. thing. We're going to try to get tell me. That. Tell a little bit more about the L10 for the stupid people like All me. Right. You know, I forgot my glasses today. All right. so I'm not tell, very smart. Tell me what the L10s yeah. are. Yeah, the L10 is a weekly reoccurring meeting. It's on the calendar, same time, same day. And we're going through metrics as far as this last week. And then we're uh, IDSing. We're 
uh, discussing the IDS model through traction. Um, Gino Wickman is the author of traction and rocket fuel, but this program called EOS. And, uh, in that time frame, we're talking high level leadership, uh, problems and solving them <clears throat> and moving the needle. So everybody's got a scorecard. Are we, are we, are we hitting the metrics that we should be? And then we're discussing the issues. And then that same model goes down into the departments, right? Like everybody's got a scorecard. How'd you do on your scorecard? Is it red? Is it green? Did you do it? Did you not? Why? Uh, talk about it in the issues and keep moving the business. Stay focused is probably the best way to say that meeting <laughs> in, in a phrase. Now in the remodeling business, uh, you said you didn't have much experience in the remodeling world to begin with. Well, yep, why did you pick don't. that business model? Because I had experience not necessarily in it and I'm in it now. And I'm like, I, I, I would pick something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course well, I'm not doing I end either. Well, again, kind of going back to the, the forced um, predicament that I put myself in by buying the uh, putting, like putting up a store three hours away and then buying that Florida location. I put myself in a predicament where I had to do something different. Now, you know, construction. So I, and I don't still to this day, I do not. Um, what I know is how to build a business and customer journey and client experience and sales process. I know all the elements of a business. And so for me, it, it does me no good actually to know uh, whether it's this type of wood or that type of finish or that type of paint, because I'm not the one making that decision. Um, and so that actually helps me stay out, right? Because you know it, you're drawn to it. You're probably pretty good at it, you know? Um, I'm not, so I stay out of the way. <laughs> Now, the process of why did I do that or why did I go into that? We we were flipping, you know, um, real estate. And inside of real estate, it's like, oh, okay, well, this is pretty, pretty repeatable process. Again, me going, this is a pattern. This is, I'm recognizing these things that we're doing and we're getting pretty good at. If we did these for other people, this is what it could look like. And this is what the client journey needs to be. And we let it roll. That's awesome. I love how you're doing this. But let's talk about the gathering of the king. It sounds like that's yeah. where you spend a lot of your time is uh, helping others with your mastermind community. Let's talk a little bit more about that community and what you do. Yeah, gathering the kings exists uh, for a couple different purposes, but um, we are a actual, like, real by the definition mastermind. And so Napoleon Hill defines mastermind in Think and Grow Rich or his work Laws of Success that came out before that as this: two or more minds that are working in harmony with each other unto the achievement of a definite chief aim or a specific target. And so our specific target as a mastermind group, when we come together and are working in harmony is to live the exceptional life. Well, what does that mean? We define that as winning in all areas. We talk about business and finance. You gotta be winning in those areas or in that, in that area. You gotta be winning in family and marriage. You gotta be winning in faith, which is not just spiritual, but also belief in self. You gotta be winning in your mental and physical health. And my belief is that you gotta be winning in lifestyle. Lifestyle for me is the things that tangibly bring me joy or intangibly bring me joy. And when you win in all five areas, in my opinion, you live the exceptional life. So our main focus as a group, we get together in different formats, some over Zoom, some in person. We're all across the country. We're all high-performing, growth-obsessed entrepreneurs. And we know we're going to get together and help each other grow in those five areas so that we can live the exceptional life. Wow. You got one out of five, Chris. I, well, you I got the lifestyle one down. I, really. got, I got lifestyle. I can, <laughs> that one, I'm just going to, I'm going to actually sacrifice the others just for that one. Yeah. Just can for I, that one. Can I be in that one mastermind group? Yeah. yeah. The lifestyle. We'll, we'll bring you in on that one leg. <laughs> just the one, uh, Chris, you get to join us for 10 minutes today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for joining. Okay. You can leave now. That's uh, awesome. You're not harmonious with the rest of us, my friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a big deal. Um, there's a lot of group coaching out there, which I think there's very valuable. I've spent a lot of money on group coaching or coaching programs. That is not a mastermind. Unfortunately, they call themselves a mastermind because that's kind of a buzzword in marketing, but a, a mastermind is a room of facilitated agitation, right? It's your thoughts and your thoughts and my thoughts. If I, as the facilitator, can get us working in a harmonious way, like you were just talking about, there is a power that actually comes out of that. Napoleon Hill talks about this, is that the, the, the only reason for success, actually, not just one of the reasons, the only reason for success is the power that comes from the mastermind principle. This is in your marriage. This is in friendships. This is this right here, this dynamic that you guys have. This is a mastermind. Look at you. We just got called masterminds. <laughs> Look People at you. Mark that down. All right. Thank Chaz, you are welcome back anytime. That's I right. Hey, I appreciate like. you. I think we should just end on that note. We should, yeah, actually, that's, that's, that's the end. <laughs> Chris and Alan just got called masterminds. Dude, Thanks what? for coming, Chaz. Yeah, really man. appreciate it. Good talking. night, Atlanta. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go back. So these mastermind groups, uh, how many groups do you have? How do people get involved and check it out? 
Great question. We, we're one big community, but we've got different membership levels. And so as you can imagine, as you've grown your business, there's different things happening inside of the business at different levels. And so somebody who's, you know, a couple hundred thousand in just kind of getting rolling, they're having different struggles. They need more tactical sales, marketing, you know, that type of thing. Um, somebody who's just hit the seven figure mark, you know, one to 3 million, they're really like just went through a big growth phase. They're probably very disorganized. They probably need to work on SOPs and just getting things cleaned up and probably hiring a little bit. And then that scale format is really going, okay, how do I take what I've got and to make this thing a machine, whether I'm involved or not, which is really processing people. It's like just an exaggerated version of what I just said, but really honing in to make sure that things are, are like really dialed. Yeah. You actually hit on something. I think a lot of people, when we, when we talk business is that the different struggles you have when you're going from zero to 300,000 uh, are totally different than the, the deal you're struggling with from one to 3 million. And then when you start getting over 5 million, the struggles are a lot different and, and it's hard to tell people unless you're in it. And, but I, so I love that facilitated agitation because I found that uh, I'm in my own mastermind group here in Atlanta and, and it is facilitated yeah. agitation. I love that phrase. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you don't need anybody to facilitate your agitation. Well, I know it's funny. It's that I don't ever need anybody to stir up my agitation. Mm -hmm. I can go anytime you that's want. Right. This Sicilian has agitation all day long. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I like how you, but, how you put agitation as in like there's more than one. Oh yeah. Oh, there's, there's always more than one. So, uh, so these groups, uh, obviously they come in, they get an idea and then you, you guys help place them and then they, they get into their groups that way. Yeah. 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 So one big community, we do a lot of things as a big community, but then yes, we got some kind of smaller connection points for, for the members based on kind of size and stuff like that or region. We do little pop-up things. We're going to be in Dallas and Houston next week. Um, doing some cool stuff there. I'm sure maybe Atlanta at one point, we do have some cool connections in Atlanta, some members as well. So maybe, maybe we'll come out to Atlanta. Oh, all right. So, so the, I think there were five spokes to this wheel. Is that correct? Yep. You know, yep. Okay. Do you, do you actually weight those equally? I mean, I have a feeling a lot of people come in and they want to just, okay. Yeah. My lifestyle of course is a byproduct of, if I'm making a lot of money and yeah, marriage faith, yeah, whatever. But I want to, I want to get around other people that'll help me be more successful. So I'm assuming there's a little bit of a, I don't know, a vetting before you let somebody be a part of the group. But then yeah. once they're in, are you spending equal time on those things? Yeah, good question. So yes, we, it's definitely a curated environment. There's got to be that that like-mindedness or harmonious uh, piece. Otherwise, the mastermind doesn't work. And so yeah, we're pretty, pretty filtered when it comes to that. What you're asking is, um, is there the same value in each spoke or each uh, you know dimension of kingship, as we say? Um, and the answer is yes. The time is always the value calculation though, mm -hmm. right? I can spend eight hours today on zoom calls, building my multiple businesses and only three hours with my kiddos this afternoon and evening, but the value or the focus or the intentionality is the same or the same intensity, right? So I'm going to run after my family as hard or in an obsessed way, like I do my businesses. And so, yes, from an equal perspective, in fact, I just pulled this up because I keep it on my desk. Um, we have what's like a five dimensions wheel. And so literally like we got all the categories around, right? And so then you just grade yourself. Like I'm a 10 or I'm a four or I'm a three or, you know, you, you and ideally it's a round wheel, right? And so if you're honest with yourself about where you are in your business, your finance, your family, your lifestyle, your faith, and your mental and physical uh, fitness or health, you can see it pretty obviously. I mean, we just did this with our members and we do this somewhat regularly, but we just did this in Nashville. We had an event in Nashville um, a couple of weeks ago and, and it's really illuminating. You look at it and you're like, dang, I thought, I mean, I'm, I am do, I'm doing really well over here. I need I need to more intentionality over here. And it's really not necessarily more effort or more time. It's intentionality because I can send, which I do a text message to my wife every single morning at 5.00 AM. I'm up at 4.30 and between 4.30 and 5.00, I'm doing some mindset prep, just work, um, some visualization and some, some stuff that we were just talking about that 95% of the subconscious, like that's all me four 30 to five every day. And at five, that alarm goes off and I send an affirmation text to my wife of something that happened yesterday that I can affirm her in or something that I appreciate. And when she wakes up, it's the first thing that she sees every morning. He is better than us in every way. Oh, so every way. better. Because. <laughs> He said, but, I sent a text no, no, message no. to my wife at 5 a.m. My wife doesn't and listen I'm like, to this. I'm like, yeah, I, I hope not. I, no. I said, so, so, what is it? Kansas I guess, City on our next vacation, is it, honey. Is it what's for breakfast? 
Is it? What's yeah, that's breakfast? right. <laughs> yeah, you can't say that. Yeah. Um, have, you done my, have you done my laundry yet? Is my laundry ready? Is my, yeah. everybody, is my, are my clothes set out yet? Are my Are they ready? You know, did yeah. you pack up my lunch, mom? <laughs> um, yeah. But but in all seriousness, that, like uh, you don't know my wife at all, and not even close. Would I be yeah. able to pull that one off? Yeah, you'd be yeah. smothered well, in bed. I would be. And 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 it's you know we have a pretty traditional house, but Julie is an Italian woman who doesn't put up with anything. So um, it's not like she just takes correct directions and, is, and says yes, sir. Like that's not our marriage. Um, and so th- there's a there. I guess what so I'm trying the to get at. The affirmation could be you didn't slash my tires yesterday. Great, that yeah. would be. <laughs> oh, no, actually, I could play this game. Now. <laughs> yes, yes. See, <laughs> see. Oh my God. Thank you it's, for letting it's me. It's got to start tonight somewhere. Again, that's okay? right. Thank you for yet another night where you didn't smother. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in bed with a pillow. Yeah, yeah. all right. But so, I, I so think it, the the intentionality is what we're talking about, right? Like, right. So now I know that every day when I do that, that that's that. Hopefully, to the listener, that wasn't like me tooting my horn because I haven't done that forever, right? That's that's a in the last twelve to fifteen months thing where I'm like committed to it. Um, you know, and we've been married cool. for sixteen years. You know, so that's let me solid. ask you this: the, the the what I'm hearing is is that it's uh. It requires a little bit of personal maturity to be able to assess yourself correctly. And so yeah. all of these uh, intentional movements to try to improve the five different areas have to come from within. Is there an accountability piece with the other people? Or for example, if Chris and I were in one of your groups and I'm looking at his lifestyle, but I'm also looking at his health and I'm like, Chris, you're solidly overweight. You're almost morbidly obese. You have gout light. Maybe you need to, you know, change your Caligula like lifestyle. So can I do that in the group or <laughs> is he supposed to come to that on his own? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I appreciate that very this is hypothetically. Great. This is yeah. all hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You like that? Did I not say he, that? He hypothetically. Say, he couldn't even pull for a friend. He's <laughs> yeah. like to Chris. Yeah. All right. So yeah. um, so I'll answer for you. Yeah. Screw you. No, I'm not changing my lifestyle. You know what? My feet are feeling better now. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Those, it, when there's great drugs. The answer to that is is actually twofold. It's actually a really great question in all seriousness because he has to come to his own conclusion. He has to be his choice. Um, and you get to partner with him in that. And so we, <clears throat> I had actually had somebody ask me this the other day, like, how do I know that I'm winning? And to me, winning is progress. It's moving towards the thing that I want because we know as entrepreneurs, like we've set the destination thing, like, oh, I'm going to get this and then I'll be fulfilled or I'm going to, and then I'll, I'll have this amount of money and then I'll X, right? And it, it just never feels the same, right? Like I remember it, you know, 27, I, I had a dream in my heart from like 12 was to buy a Mercedes. I bought a brand new Mercedes. I'm 27, I think is what it was. And like two months later, it was just another car, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've had that experience, but mm-hmm. when we do this, it's just like, oh, it's not the destination. So if I can actually take that cliche and take it seriously and recognize that the journey is me winning and me going, oh, oh, I got it. So part of that recognition is the guy who's, needs to be better in his marriage or needs to lose some weight or needs to be more disciplined in his business, whatever it it is, or multiple of those things going, okay, what does winning look like? What's the step I can take today, this, this week, this month, this quarter. And then, oh yeah, I got some other guys around me that are running pretty hard. And it's like, dude, like I, I want to run harder because these guys are running hard too. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why I'd say peer pressure works both ways. It's not always negative. It could be positive. And that's where, your accountability group uh, puts the pressure on you to, to do the things you got to do to keep your business growing and staying on track with your targets and things that you said out loud. Hey, I'm going to do this by this month, next month. Hey, how come you didn't do it? Ooh, well, um, let me explain. Yeah. And so, sometimes tough love is the best type. It's like, Hey, look, man, like, you know, man to man, entrepreneur to entrepreneur. Cause we've got Queens in the group, like lots of them actually winning or King is not, um, you know, masculine. It's, it's mindset. Winning is mindset. And so, you can call somebody out with love and go, Hey, look, man, you said this thing for three months now. <laughs> what are you doing? What are we doing? Yeah, man. You can't keep saying it and not make it happen. Love that. You gotta stay with it. You gotta stay on it. I love it. Love it. Love it. All right. We're coming to the end, man. And I hate this because I'm just, I'm soaking it all in. It went by so fast. What the, it did. I know it did. I mean, he's cool. Chaz has got, got that time, effect on time people. traveler. I have that effect on people. I love that. I'm a, I'm a time traveler. <laughs> the Chaz yeah, effect. effect. The Chaz, Chaz effect. What happened to all those hours? I don't know. I just lost I'm hypnotized by that. Oh my God. It's like the Bermuda train. By the beard and the voice. <laughs> That's right. Uh, look at my beard. Listen to my voice. <laughs> Chaz, thank you so much for coming on. But win. I, I got to ask our famous four questions. What is a good book that you would recommend to our audience? I know we've mentioned a few already. Those have already been mentioned, including the Bible. 
the good book has been mentioned. Uh, so what other books would you recommend or book? Yeah, I'm, I, there's a lot of great books, but Think and Grow Rich is the only one that I read. I mean, outside the Bible, outside every single year, multiple times, you know, this, I've probably read it five times this year already. Why? Um, no, I take that back. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It was five times last year, last calendar year. I, I'm, we're already in another calendar year, but you get what I'm saying. <clears throat> yeah. There's just elements there that just are timeless. And every time that you go in your retrospective, um, it's a new message. Wow. Solid from a different place all the time. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh my God. All right. What's the favorite feature of your home? Yeah, good question. Uh, that we've got space. We've got some acreage here in Kansas City. So my kiddos get to like play in the creek and ride the ranger and just be free. And that's that's why I build businesses is for freedom. So you got lots of property there. I saw the uh the quarterback special where Patrick Mahomes was uh, building his home. Is that anywhere near yours? Uh believe it or not, it is. It's probably 10 minutes from here. Oh, really? Yeah. Did did you put a par three in the back of your yard? Yeah. <laughs> no, I do have the space for it though. Um, I like it. I, I'm more of a, a 3D uh, deer target, and I, I shot a nice buck right out here just a couple months ago. And uh, I'll shoot. My my four year old son is already shooting a bow, and we're ready. We're, we're oh, big elk hunters in this family. We like to go into the woods and and uh, dominate. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Wow, that's a that's a great hobby to actually have with your kid too. All right, we are uh, we are always interested in customer service because we are customer service freaks. Hello, what is a customer service pet peeve of yours when you're out in the marketplace and you're the customer? Yeah, um, when I have clearly articulated what I want and you didn't pay attention, you didn't listen, you didn't write it down, and I'm kind of a particular guy, and I'm okay with that. <clears throat> I also like to deliver service in that same fashion. Uh, intentional. And so I like to give the example of when I'm at a restaurant, I'm really easy to please. If you bring me the food that I ordered in the exact way I ordered it, and you just keep my glass of water full, I'll tip amazingly. Um, but those two very simple things get right. missed most times. Yeah. Simple bless. Just, I mean, not to say blocking and tackling, but I'm, I said it. So there you go. I've already there said it, go. but that's it. You just got it. I mean, ugh. Just, it's not that hard. It really is it's, not. It's really not. This is not Unreasonable Hospitality, which is another book that was brought up, mm -hmm. which one of our listeners said, you can, say, you can consider yourself an influencer. I've gone out and buy the book. I'm, I said, awesome. I think because that's an amazing book, and Reasonable yeah. Hospitality by Will uh, Gudici, I think. Um, all right, last one. Give us a DIY nightmare story. Yeah. Emergency um, services, blood. Stab, yeah. Fingers yeah. maybe got Stabbing. put back on. Hmm. I don't have any, <clears throat> any like that. I think the, the one I was going to use, um, it, when we built our house, um, there was, you could just tell a lot of the intentionality that we were just talking about was missed. And so being the systems guy that I am, I, Does that mean I, control freak. Yeah. That was a nice way of saying that, but yeah. I appreciate you making that clear. systems. <laughs> how do you say that again? Systems. I'm a systems guy. And you say it like that too. You yes. kind of linger off. I'm a systems, systems guy. guy. And they go, oh, and my yeah. builder was not. A yeah. systems guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so they uh, usually I'm, aren't. Yeah. You know, so th th that was, it wasn't a nightmare by any means at all. We have a beautiful home. He's a great person and here we are, but um, there were things along the way where I thought I was not going to have any hair left. And I wondered if, you know, he may not have a business. <laughs> right. Oh, that's so hard. I mean, again, setting expectations. Is, well, now, you know, you're in the remodeling business, um, yeah. when you're doing it, setting expectations for customers and, and actually fulfilling on them is a very difficult, uh, because it's just not a linear effort. It seems yeah, like it'd be right. easy, but it's not like coding. You know, you can't, I can't send five poor people in there to fix this code. That's and right. have it done in two minutes. Sometimes I have to let things work its way out. Sometimes I can't get the product that I wanted. You know, it's, it's just, it's yeah, hard, but, parts. but again, you got to set those expectations and then communicate, 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 communicate over and over and over. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's all the right. Thing. Chaz Wolf gathering of the Kings. If you would learn something, man, that's on you because at least you, you know how to go get an edible arrangement. I mean, that's a great idea <laughs> right there. Yeah. You know, another, another cutesy thing that you could send, send your customer an edible arrangement. They, they'll right. love it. Yeah. They might love that. Is that the biggest nugget I took? Actually not. So um, we can always be exceptional. And what I put is being, here's the one thing I actually am going to take. 
being excellent is a belief and a belief in self. And I talk about that all the time in sales is that in sales, you always fall to your lowest level of belief. That's and right. we, my job in my company is to get my guys up in belief so they can go out there and kill it every day. You're not going to send your wife an affirmation text at five o'clock in the morning every day. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you what, I will do it and I'll report back to you guys on how long it takes her. The over under right now will be 3.75 days to do what, to, to do what to actually, to actually recognize that I sent it. Okay, good. And, okay. and then keep going. Don't, don't berate her for it. Just keep going. Yeah. Just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. See okay. what happens. Cause I get, I'll tell you what, the results that us guys are truly looking for will happen. Hey, oh, yeah, we are <laughs> done. And on that note, everybody, go make it a great day. Get up that mountaintop. Let's make it successful. We could do it together. Send me some DMs. Send me some more information. Let me know you're reading books. Let's get out of here. Go learn. Cheers. Thanks, Chaz. Thanks, guys.